that the framework knows that when we click the button, we fire off the button click event. So if your question is what submits it, it gets submitted by the virtue of the fact that it's a submit button. All right. If you're asking what fires off that code that does the calculation, well, the framework knows that when this form gets submitted, if that button got clicked, I'm going to go and do this code. That's how it knows to do that code. That's why before it added, we clicked it, it submitted it, but there was no processing done, right? It just, it, it did the validation and it looked to make sure everything was entered, but if there wasn't, if, if everything was fine, it just looked at me, you know, it didn't do anything. Maybe what we can do is sit down in lab and, and, and go over this in more detail. If, if you're still struggling with something. Because I'm not really sensing where the disconnect is coming. You know, you know what a submit button is. I know you know that. You've, you, you know, I've seen you in other classes and you use them and you've got a handle on that. So you, you know that a submit button, what a submit button does. And this is an ASP.NET button that gets translated to a submit button. So, the question of how does it get submitted, that's how it gets submitted. That button turns into a HTML submit button, which means when we click it, it submits the form to whoever it's supposed to, the action, which in this case is the file itself. And then the ASP.NET framework handles the fact that, hey, this is the code here that I want to do when the form is submitted and that button got clicked. So it will run off and it will do this code. How does it know to do that code? Well, if we look, it says, when this button gets clicked, call that function. So that function gets invoked when the button gets clicked and the form has been submitted back to the server. But, given that the submit button is a submit button, the button being clicked is equivalent to submitting it to the server unless there's some sort of validation error that gets in the way. But assuming all validation is square, clicking that button submits the form and calls the on-click event on the button. Let's go, we can look at this in lab more if you have questions about exactly the mechanism by which that occurs. Okay, right now I have a default for the drop down of plus, right? I don't really have a default, but I do have a default. I haven't explicitly said that's a default, but remember, a drop down always has a value. So, as such, if you don't define a default, the selected, uh, the, the selected item is going to be the, just the first item on the list. So, sometimes that's not a good idea to do that. I suppose in this case it doesn't really hurt, but let's say I didn't want there to be a default here. So, what would I do? I'd do a dummy value in here. I'd go into my drop-down list. <clears throat> go to my list of items. I'd put in a dummy item that says, please select operation. <clears throat> value of please select op operation, then I'll make this guy the first one on the list. All right. Then what do I need to do to make sure that they don't try submitting it with that? I need to put a required field validator on it. What is it associated with? It's associated with the drop down. 
control to validate. I'll set my display to dynamic. And I set the initial value to the dummy selection. The value of the dummy selection, which is please select operation. So now if I go and that's the operation that's picked, that first dummy one on the list, and I try to click submit, the validation knows that, hey, that's not a legitimate choice. And it gives me the error. If I go in and select, then it works. Question. Visually, and again, this is, this is a case of, you know, thinking in terms of what will be the best way to communicate to your user and all that, and then understanding how to do it on a technical level. Oftentimes, we might want to do something like we might want this text will appear differently if they got it right versus wrong. Maybe we want the text to be green if they got it right and red if they got it wrong or whatever. All right. How would we do that? How could I make this text green if I got it right and red if I got it wrong? Okay, good question. We could look at that. We could look at label answer. And there is a for color, which is the color of the text. Wouldn't both of them be the same color? Repeat that, please. Wouldn't both of them be the same color? If you, if you pick that, then both congratulations and because the same labels would be the same. Okay, color. what would we do then? We already have an if statement. Right, but within the if statement, like whenever we did that if statement in the source code, you would put uh, label answer dot four color or whatever equals red or green. Exactly. Instead of doing it in the properties. That's one way that we could do it. Is there's a four color associated with it? Remember, this is a property just like anything else, right? If you remember back to one of the previous examples, we were making things visible and invisible, right? So we can change, and I guess the, the point that I'm trying to get across here is we can change any property we want to. Yes, go ahead. I, I thought you were going to change, like, if it was correct, congratulations would be green, and if it were wrong. Exactly, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Oh, okay. Got the right. I'm sorry. So, I could do it this way. I could say... something like this. Label answer dot for color equals I'm just setting it to a, a, a brighter green. Okay. So I 
to do that. System drawing color. to show the way that I probably wouldn't do it. <laughs> and we could do this red. So now if we go in and say 1 plus 1 equals 2, congratulations is green. If we say that, try again in red. Now, point of this is, again, remember that so much of your coding here becomes a question of what is a property or attribute that I need to change to do what I want to do. All right? So if the question is, how do I make that green? The question is, is like, well, I know I can dynamically set properties. We've seen that. We make things appear and disappear. If I can make something disappear, I can change it green, right? I mean, come on, that's a lot easier, right? So the question is then is like, what is the property? And what do I set it to uh, in order to do that? All right. But I wouldn't do that that way. I'd do it a different way. How do you think I would do it? I bet you would use CSS. And you would be right, <laughs> all right? I would use CSS to do it. Because if I look here... One of the other properties, and of course, why would I not do that? that? That seems like a lot of hard coding. And if I decided, what if I decided throughout my application that I wanted to change from red to green to, to purple and blue or something like that? Uh, probably not a good choice, but you get the idea. If we look, there is also another attribute called the CSS class. And I could set the CSS class to correct. Or I could set the CSS class to incorrect. Then I would have to make sure that I had in my CSS code, I'll go in and create a CSS file. And I'll create a class for correct. And we should be in business. So the idea is that 
then we can associate any sort of visual attributes, and that's controlled in the style sheet. And to make a change of the visual, I don't have to dig into the code. Right? I don't have to know C Sharp to do that. I could give this to someone that only knew HTML and say, hey, we want to make our wrong answers look different. We want to put a background of, you know, a skull and crossbones or something. All right? Well, that's ominous, right? We, we, we probably wouldn't want to do that. But um, you get the idea. We could, we could set all those. And we could guarantee consistency throughout our application. If this was some sort of quiz utility and there were drills and practices and quizzes and all that, we could have one look for the correct answer, one look for the incorrect answer. So, um, I, 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 uh, I have to say it's sort of made by, by day by knowing that it was going to be a CSS-based solution. I've, I've done something right if I've communicated that throughout, uh, throughout the past however many classes or whatever. The bigger point, though, is, is that remember that we can access and manipulate all of the properties of these controls. So we access the value that was entered to do the calculation. We access the value that was selected from a dropdown. We access the text to display a message, whether it was correct or incorrect. We um, access style properties to make the answer look different if it was correct versus incorrect. So by, with the code behind, you know, we have the ASP.NET page that we can go and we can put things on the page and we can configure all those properties, but the code behind we can come in and access them and change them any way we want to, to dynamically affect the way the page looks so that we can change it to get the sort of behavior that we want. All right. Yeah, go ahead. Can you show the, the source code really quick again to, like, to label that answer that CSS class? I want to make sure I got it. Yeah, it was just, and I, again, I will post this. Okay, yeah. But it's just label dot and you just set it to CSS correct. class equals, and I said to the name of the class. And then you did dot correct. The and then I created my style sheet with that. Yeah. Okay. Again, you know, this is a case of like knowing the HTML that gets created. In other words, this label this label, which is an ASP.NET label, is going to get translated to a span, and the CSS class is going to get translated to its class property. So when I go and do this, if I do this right. The HTML that gets generated is span ID label answer class equals correct. It always goes back to the HTML that gets generated. I, I think you really need a grip on that and going back there to get really an understanding of what's going on and all that. So I encourage you to look at the HTML that gets generated. Yes? Can you set the CSS class in the properties window? Yeah. So I could set, yeah, I, As a general rule, any class, any property you can set in the properties window, you can also code and vice versa. So these are just like public properties that you can access and manipulate either through initially when you set up through the properties window or, or through your code. Other questions? I'm going to try to have an exercise for Thursday. I know there's a class in, in our lab until like 1045, so we might meet for a half hour or so, and then have an exercise uh, on whatever the next day we meet is. Thursday? Thursday, yeah. Your Friday. Yeah, my Friday. Thank you. All right. All right. We'll see you over in lab. Probably two megs.
if that ever happens, email it to me and post a note saying that. And you know, and, I, and I'll try to look at it and, and uh, correct it going forward. But yeah, the, the simplest thing is just to email me and uh, and then include a note. But you always have to put something in the job.